What's up my fellow Sith and Jedi? Today we're going to be doing a video a little bit different. Um, maybe uh, kind of talking about my love for Star Wars and uh, doing that, uh, assembling the set I got here for Christmas. I've been waiting to put it together, just waiting for the right time and uh, I guess now is the time. Um, I love Legos, I love Star Wars. Um, if you know me for a while, you know both of those are true. Um, you probably have seen Kylo Ren in a bunch of the videos. She's here walking around. Um, yeah, she's named after Kylo Ren from Star Wars. Um, wife says I'm a little bit obsessed. She's probably right, but um, that's okay. <clears throat> I, um, I asked for this set um, specifically this year because um, this is the 20th anniversary of the Lego Star Wars uh, collaboration. And this one comes with a um, limited edition 20-year uh, anniversary Darth Vader minifigure. Um, Vader is my favorite uh, character out of all the Star Wars. Like I'm here in my shirt. Um, got a bunch of different Vaders here and there. Um, love him. He's my favorite. And um, if you know Star Wars, you probably know why. But I'm um, not really going to go into detail about that. But we'll go ahead and um, get this open. It has been a while since I uh, put together a Lego set. Um, definitely one like this. Um, so it's going to be uh, relearning kind of how to do it. Uh, you never really forget how to put Legos to set. You just uh, kind of follow the instructions and uh, go with it. Yeah, I'd say the last Lego set I did put together was probably my Darth Vader Lego set, ironically. Um, let's see here. I guess we'll go ahead and get these open. This one's labeled number one. This one's labeled two. I'm assuming you start off with number one first. Let's see here. It's a nice booklet here. Um, got the 20th anniversary logo over it. Um, gives a little description here. Kind of just goes over how 20 years ago Lego and Star Wars decided to work together. Kind of showing the difference between the original version and the updated Scout Walker. Um, showing all the other uh, limited edition ones you can get to collect the minifigures. Um, kind of real nice. Goes over here. Um, this is a Scout Walker. Um, from the Battle of Kaish, uh, this is a Wookiee homeworld. Um, in episode three, um, kind of shows the clones um, fighting the droids on um, their homeworld, and the Wookiees teaming up kind of introduces Yoda and Chewbacca having a friendship or a prior relationship between it before any of the originals. But uh, after the clones took over, they did take over the whole entire planet, and, um, you know, Chewie kind of went to slavery for a bit, and then he became, a uh, met with Han Solo. So go here, so one's first, one looks like it just makes some Vader, some of the other characters, and the little droid here, I don't know if you can see it. So we'll go ahead and uh, open up one, get started. Ah, okay, so um, first one is assembling the Wookiee. Pretty straightforward. Go ahead and show you that. Go ahead and set them aside for now. And then next is assembling the droid. I've definitely updated their designs and stuff since when I started playing with them back in the day. Uh, I've probably been assembling Legos um, about as long as Star Wars and Legos have been collabing. Um, really hard for me to say who, uh, what I started liking first, Legos or Star Wars. Um, probably right around the same time and even, you know, so... Maybe even when they started doing this is what got me into both. Uh, I don't remember, that was 20 years ago. <laughs> but uh, ever since then, I've been hooked on both Star Wars and Legos. Um, yeah, I'm like a little kid. Every time I go to a store, uh, 
I have to go look at the Legos just to see what's out there. I never really buy any, but I just like looking to see what they have out nowadays. It's always interesting. So I've got the droid set up there. His blaster, pretty neat. Set him aside. And then next I have us actually assembling Vader. Here, over the years, I've probably had many um, Vader minifigures. Um, I've had Vader mini keychain, uh, key that was Lego Star Wars. I have the big, uh, big Vader. I have a bunch of other small Vaders, but this one, you know, comes with that stain, a little special. Here you go, you got Vader. There you go, we got him standing up there. And now it's gonna go ahead and assemble the base for him. So we got this nice base, it says 20 years Lego Star Wars, 99-2019, Darth Vader. I'm gonna show you that. It's pretty nice. Go ahead and get it put together. Okay, and it goes on the base just like that. I think that looks pretty cool. I like it. Definitely going with the rest of my Star Wars collectibles. And now it looks like we're getting on to building the tr uh, little, it looks like a little fort for the Wookiee. Go ahead and get that assembled. Okay, so that's complete. You know, come in here, defend his homeland, defend his territory. Pretty neat. Just a little cool set piece. Go ahead and slip, move that over. Now it looks like we're gonna go ahead and start building the uh, droid here. So yeah, I'm growing up with um, you know what they call the prequels. Um, the old. The old school fans, they don't really like the prequels. Um, some of them do, some of them don't. Um, growing up with them, I enjoy them. Um, I don't know if I would say they're my favorite, but they definitely hold a special part. Um, they were the first Star Wars movies I could go see in movie theater. I remember going to see episode one, two, and three. I believe I did see all of them in the movie theaters um, growing up. Um, definitely watched the originals before I saw them, definitely in Star Wars before they came out, but, um, what really got me into Star Wars was the fact that there was new movies coming out while I was growing up, and then, again, the Legos were coming out right around the same time, so it was an exciting, uh, period to be young, a kid, and, um, all the cool Star Wars stuff coming out, and, uh, ever since then, I've been hooked, I would definitely say... They're probably tied for my favorite. Um, there are a lot of action based, you know, being an older movie, the CGI isn't as good as what it would be nowadays. But the storyline's kind of lacking a little bit as big criticism as everyone says the storyline's kind of eh. But you know, it was pretty exciting growing up and watching them. Now, the, the original movies. I definitely enjoyed the original movies. They're a bit slow being older style, not as action-packed, but definitely better storyline than the prequels. Um, you know, it was where I introduced to my favorite character, Darth Vader. So without them, you know, I wouldn't have my favorite boy. Um, and then, you know, obviously they introduced the whole entire saga and what started it all. But, uh, 
you know, the action, it's here and there. Um, definitely enjoy the the uh, practical effects that Star Wars created and kind of pioneered. And without that, and we don't, who knows where we'd be without movies. Um, now, the new ones, I enjoy the new ones for what they are. Um, Storyline, yes, is kind of all over the place, kind of doesn't make sense at certain times, kind of seems like they were throwing things together, which if you know anything about them, they kind of were. But they're good, they definitely add to the Star Wars saga. Um, not a big Lego set, it only has 250 pieces. Um, looks like the majority of it's going to be in the actual walker itself. So besides Vader, um, my other favorite character is uh, Darth Maul. I know he only appeared for a little bit in the episode one. But uh, if you watch any of the shows, um, Clone Wars TV show, uh, Rebels, you know, he definitely has a more of a presence in those. And definitely develops his character a whole lot more. And get to kind of learn what makes him tick and see why he's so important to the actual whole storyline. Um, so if you've just seen the movies, you know, no, he didn't die when he fell down um, the big pit. You know, in Star Wars, you know, it's always a big joke. You know, there's always a big pit. Someone's falling down. Um, he didn't die. He actually survived. And he went on and um, developed a big hate for the Emperor. It felt like the Emperor betrayed him. And he kind of goes on this rampage for a while and tries to become new Sith Lord and overthrow uh, Palpatine. Ultimately, he fails. Palpatine captures him. Yada, yada, yada. He pops back up again. Him and Obi-Wan um, fight in the desert. Uh, probably a couple of... A couple years before episode four. Um, definitely Obi-Wan's older at this point. But uh, he's not fully his old age. Luke is still a baby. And Maul kind of realizes that Luke is the chosen one. And it was a good ending for Maul. Um, definitely better than just falling in a pit and dying. Okay, so it looks like this is actually it. A functioning launcher. Oh, I'll shoot too far and lose it. Okay, yeah, it does launch. That's pretty cool. Show you him. Pretty neat. Let's set him off. Let's see what we got next. Okay, so next looks like we're getting to bag number two. Okay, and looks at first we're gonna go ahead and assemble the scout trooper. Um, scout troopers. Um, it was a clone. The clones are not the same as uh, Stormtroopers. When uh, Empire first did take over, a lot of Stormtroopers were former clones. But when we roll around to Episode 4, around that time, most of the clones had died out, being, you know, 20, 30 years of war. Um, so they're mostly gone and replaced by normal um, humans. So they look very similar, but yes, there is a difference between the two. I'll show you. Pretty neat. So at this point, um, where this set's from in the movie, um, you know, clones are helping the Wookiees battle off the droids. The droids are uh, the bad guys, clones and Wookiees good guys. And towards the end of this battle is actually when, what, Order 66 um, was known, was called. Order 66 is the... Um, Order that was pre-programmed into the droids, or not droids, I'm sorry, the um, the clones that actually made them turn on the Jedi and start killing them. It was like a computer chip, you know, stuck in their head. They couldn't ignore it. Um, Emperor had control over them. So once Order 66 was given, all the clones at that point basically became evil and started going against the Jedi. Um... Bunch of Jedi actually died in this battle because of that. Um, Yoda was there. Yoda almost died, but he uh, sensed um, the betrayal of the Force, and he kind of escaped before they were able to actually corner him and kill him. So this is kind of the turning point in Star Wars where it went from being many Jedi 
to being only down to only a few, down to where we pick back up in the movies, to where there's only Yoda, Obi Wan, and eventually Luke Skywalker. A couple did survive that you don't see in the movies. You'll see them in like Rebels um, and the um, other various TV shows that uh, they did survive and uh, went to hiding. But eventually most of them, either their stories are incomplete or they were eventually found by Vader and killed. Um, it's a big thing after, you know, three ends and between three and four, Vader went on a rampage and he was hunting down Jedi and killing them all. So, um, ordered by the Emperor to do so. And speaking of the clones and the Clone Wars, the last season of the Clone Wars is getting ready to come out on Disney Plus. I'm real excited about that. They um they never did finish the original series. Um, kind of the Cartoon Network owned it, and then when Disney bought uh, Star Wars, they kind of put a stop on it. And then um, Netflix had it for a while. They uh, put out lost episodes. Um, basically, they had a couple episodes of the last season mostly finished. They went ahead and finished them, put them out, and that was originally the last season. But um, they never did wrap up everything, and now um, Disney has finalized that last season, and it looks like they're actually going to blend in the last season of The Clone Wars into um, episode three based on the previews. Um, so it looks like it's definitely going to finalize any kind of questions that the Clone Wars itself left open. Um, wish it was going to be more than one season, but uh, it is the last season. So kind of, you know, we've already got our the story. Um, there's only so much you can do about the Clone Wars. Well, it was a big period of time for the Clone Wars. Uh, I couldn't tell you how long off the top of my head, but, you know, the movies kind of make it seem real short. I'm actually... A great deal of time passes in episode three is not, you know, wham, bam, movie. It's, uh, I believe, right around a year, maybe a little longer. I can't remember off the top of my head. But, you know, a decent amount of time passes during that movie. But the Clone Wars definitely covers a whole, the whole war, essentially, from episode two to three. And uh, the original run of the show kind of left a big gap at the end. And so now they're coming back and they're going to finish that, close up that gap, which looking forward to. And after that, um, it's going to be uh, kind of it for a while for Star Wars. It's kind of the end of uh, another end of the era. You know, episode nine just came out, um, finally, you know, revealed um, kind of how that saga ends. I'm not going to go into details. I want to. Any spoilers for anyone that hasn't seen it yet, still not out on DVD. But, uh, yeah, that's over. The Clone Wars is going to come out. That's going to be over. It's going to kind of be it for a bit. I do feel like it's going to be a good thing that we're going to kind of go into a low period because there's so much Star Wars. You had the two standalone movies. Rogue One and Han Solo, and then you have the three new movies, um, about five movies in about five year period of time, um, kind of saturated it a bit, kind of made Star Wars not so special anymore. I did enjoy the overall arch of the new movies, um, and a lot of people said they're bad, they suck, blah blah blah, I didn't think so. They were good, I enjoyed all of them, um, my favorite is definitely episode 9, um, Palpatine Returns. I really enjoyed Palpatine. You know, he's a mastermind of uh, everything, Darth Sidious. I um, enjoyed what came to be of Kylo Ren's character. And uh, Rey definitely answered a lot of questions when it came to both of them. It did wrap it up in a good way, but a little, little fast. I believe that they probably could have made episode nine into a two-part movie, but then again, get into that being saturated.
Can you go on this? Okay, so let's go this part. We'll go ahead and go on to the next part. You know, always trying to align these, always uh, the pain. So I do enjoy them when they're uh, pre-done. Luckily, there's only two stickers for this, so we made it past the first one, so doing good so far. This is always the worst when you're putting together Legos and you can't find the piece. You know it's there, you know you didn't drop anything. Definitely not in the bags. So let's see, we'll go ahead and... Oh, well, actually, it turns out I'm looking for a piece that doesn't exist. I only need one of these, not two. And I wish I'd still had um, all my original Star Wars Lego sets, or even all my Lego sets still put together. Um, you know how things go throughout the years, moving around, um, you know, kind of how to take them apart. Uh, I still have probably, if not all, most of the pieces, but um, had to be disassembled over the years. Um, had the Millennium Falcon, I've had um, some other sets. I got a big Yoda. Um, but unfortunately, most of them have kind of fallen apart and, you know, between moving here and there, they've no longer assembled. Um, you know, I got all characters definitely from this time area, you know, all the Jedi. Um, and then they started to the thing back in the day when the lightsabers used to light up when you press down on them. That was pretty neat. This yeah, set's pretty simple, straightforward. Um, I guess it's a good one to get back into uh, assembling, get back into the groove here. I'm probably not going to do many Lego videos just because, uh, you know, the Legos are pretty expensive. Um, you know, if you have kids or you ever played it with them yourself, you, you know, you know, they're on the more pricier side. But also, you know, being an adult and can't be spending all your money on Legos because you have bills and then I don't have anywhere to put all the sets. Uh, and if I could buy them, I have nowhere to put them all. So, you know, once once in a while here and there, you know, not a big deal. Rotate it, get it standing up there. Very nice. Coming along. Imagine there's only a couple steps left. And yet again, it left us three of these red things to be um, launched out. We're not going to go ahead and launch this one. Um, we already tested it, now it works with the droid. So we got that all set. We got a chills up in here. So yeah, that's uh, the end of it. The rest of the manual just kind of shows other little sets and things you can buy. Here maybe on the was it the left side this is the original version of the Clone Scout Walker. And then on the right, 2019. So the original one came out in 2005. This one's 2019. Um, original is 108 pieces. This one was 250. Um, the original one didn't come with the droids. And then it uh, wasn't really a realistic clone, where the new one is more of a realistic clone for the battle. I'd show you that there. 
But yeah, that wraps it up here. Um, thanks for tuning in. Uh, listen to me talk about Star Wars. Um, if you know me, if you ever want to out, hang out with me, go out drinking with me, you know I love talking about Star Wars. So yeah, thanks for tuning in. Um, give it a share, like, follow, um, subscribe, and uh, stay tuned for uh, other videos. Thank you.